Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Good evening. My name is Hugh. I'm an alcoholic. Um, And I feel like crying already, so... We get it together here. Um, I'll apologize in advance. I'm supposed to speak for 40 minutes, Larry, correct? I'm going to make it 50 minutes. Uh, I have got a story. Um, I was actually uh, um, talking to a, a friend just a little earlier, and he'd asked me if I'd ever spoken uh, for this long. And I told him I had, and then I told him the story of, uh, of um, uh, a meeting uh, that I went to in England uh, when I was maybe a month sober, and I walked in and never been there before, and uh, I, I actually never went back again, um, which will give you a tip. But um, uh, the uh, the secretary asked if I'd like to lead the meeting, and uh, without knowing the difference, uh, 10 minutes uh, before the hour, he told me I'd better wrap it up because other people would like to share at that point. <laughs> I, I guess I was supposed to read the preamble and, and the steps of Alcoholics Anonymous and be done with it, but uh, um, I had a story. and I, uh, What he actually said, because uh, um, as I found early on uh, going to meetings, uh, people were exceptionally kind and, um, and willing to give me a lot of rope, and not the kind of rope that some of my friends today would give me to hang myself with, but uh, more of a safety uh, line. Um, he, he told me that, uh, he said, you know, don't worry about it. You obviously needed to uh, uh, to say some of those things, and, and it's more important that uh, we hear that rather than listen to the same old people. It was a small village in, in England. Um, I am hopelessly disorganized. Um, I have been for a very long time, um, my life. And uh, I started to, uh, to um, write some flash notes down, which... Flash cards, rather. See, I don't even know what a flash card is. Um, but uh, I, I got up to nine years of age, and I, I just couldn't go any further. So <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give you up to, I'll give you up to nine years, and uh, you can. I'll start looking for inspiration from the uh, from the peanut gallery over there. Um, but uh, I grew up um, uh, in a. a country called Wales, which is part of the United Kingdom. Um, a lot of Welsh people uh, think it shouldn't be, but uh, I'm not one of them. Uh, I grew up as a, as a British guy, and um, uh, I've been sober um, 26 years now, um, which is a long time for me, uh, in my eyes anyway. But uh, uh, we just, uh, myself and my family, just went back to, um, to Wales and... Uh, Spent quite a bit of time traveling around there, and uh, I was just reminded, um, you know, of uh, how things were when I was a little kid. And um, uh, I've written the, the word idyllic down because, uh, you know, that's how it was. Um, so what happens? Obviously, something happened, right? <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'm going to skip that part because maybe I'll come back to it one, one way or the other or not. But uh, uh, I had a I had a, a, a really nice uh, childhood growing up. Um, uh, I, it was privileged somewhat, and um, uh, I don't I didn't really sort of I don't have that many memories of of, of my childhood. But when I went back to Wales, um, it just felt great. Um, so that tells me that there's. Uh, Nothing much missing there. Um, the rest of my life, of course, is uh, is, is um, ahead of me. And uh, uh, I went uh, I went away to school. I went to boarding school. It was called public school um, in England. And um, uh, I was there until I was about seventeen years of age, and then. Uh, I was let, or I let myself loose on the world. I was a, a bad student, not a horrible student, but just a, a bad student. And uh, we we went uh, we went home after every term uh, with school reports, and um, they were very trusting at my school. 
they'd actually hand them to us and ask them to hand them to the parents. And uh, uh, we had something called a housemaster. That was the, uh, uh, you know, we had Latin, math, history, so on and so forth. And uh, the housemaster was somebody that, uh, uh, that ran the, the, the boarding house or, or the house that, uh, that we all lived in. Um, and uh, I'm going to screw this up. He, uh, he wrote on my, uh, on my report... Um, uh, Hugh has, you know, he's talented. He, he says he's that, you know, all the kind things. And then, uh, and then he went on to say that he he suffers from culpable negligence. And uh, he was from the north of England, and they have a particular accent there, uh, which is kind of whining, sort of. Uh, um, uh, I've never forgotten that. It just it kind of uh, lived with me um, for, for a long, long time. And what it, it basically means is that. Uh, um, is that I wasn't any different from anyone else. I had every chance that every other kid had. Um, I just opted not to take the easy road. I opted to take the road of a uh, path of least resistance, which is to do nothing. And um, uh, what do we call that here? Procrastination is what I learned uh, that was to become uh, for my life. And uh, um, I suffer from it still. You know, I'd rather, uh, well, <laughs> Witness this, you know, I, I have the... <laughs> it seemed like a good idea at the time, and, and, it, and it was a good idea at the time, but uh, I, I didn't do it, you know. And, and uh, I think uh, some people say you fly by the seat of your pants, so I continue to do that. Um, I want to thank Tanya for, um, for speaking. Um, set the bar quite high, actually. You mentioned pretty much everything in the correct order that, that, uh, that I would have wanted to do. And, uh, um, you know, your story is, is uh, as, as you had said yourself, uh, your story is very different to mine. But in, um, in an odd way, in this little circle that we create here, um, it, it's, very, it's very much uh, similar. Now, when I first started coming to meetings, um, I didn't think I belonged here. Um, I didn't think I, I, I didn't want to be here, that's for sure. I didn't think I belonged here, and um, uh, I just heard enough at the first meeting to, to think, well, I'll come back and see if there's really anything to this. Actually, I didn't have that kind of fluid thought at all. Um, I was just <laughs> told that I should come here. So I started coming here, and uh, um, I was told to, uh, as, or somebody said at some point, maybe it was said 10 times or more, but I heard it at some point. They said, listen for the similarities, not the differences. And, um, you know, that challenged me a little bit because, uh, because I had all the differences lined up. And um, uh, that, was, that was one thing that really got my attention. So after I heard that and understood it somewhat, uh, I started to come to meetings. And they also told me, you know, come to meetings until you want to come to meetings. And um, after a fashion, that happened as well. And that happened in large measure because I think I've heard it many from other, many other people. I started to hear bits and pieces of my story. And um, I love my story. You know, it's my story. So I want to hear more of it. And uh, uh, over a period of time, and there are some people that have known me for a, for a while, um, I, I may try and adopt their story as well. But... Uh, uh, um, Either way, uh, I, I started coming to meetings, and um, uh, that happened uh, in Lexington, Kentucky. I, I came out here in 1986 and uh, uh, went to work uh, uh, with breeding racehorses, and uh, um, I just, you know, the, uh, I, I loved that work, and it was, but it was hard, and uh, and I had this uh, uh, this need to to be somebody else and to do to do things that I was incapable of. Um, and I set myself up to fail. And it was inevitable that, uh, that I was going to start drinking and, uh, and, and become an alcoholic. Uh, that is something I believe, not that I was born with necessarily, but something that, um, something that, that a switch came on earlier in my life or whatever, where, um, I, I just felt like I couldn't deal with, uh, um, things were uncomfortable, and so I looked for other avenues. And uh, alcohol was an easy one. It was accepted um, where I came from. 
um, it was uh, a social uh, habit, and um, I took that way beyond the point where it was uh, a social habit. Um, but uh, nevertheless, that's my story. It was alcohol and, it, 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 and not drugs. Um, things, times have changed, I guess, but uh, uh, here we are at AA, so uh, I guess I should stick to that. Um, uh, the, uh, I, I guess, um, a good sign that my, uh, my drinking and my thinking, that the two are not, uh, not, you know, too far apart there. Um, um, the, the drinking and the thinking, um, should have, uh, tapped in because, uh, uh when I was 15, I, I went, uh, stay with a cousin of mine. Um, and he was training racehorses in England and I spent a couple of weeks with him. I was 15 years old and I got horribly drunk one night and, uh, um, I was sweary to him on the drive home and, and, uh, you know, I was embarrassing. And then I threw up, uh, red Marti martini on his, uh, very nice white carpet. And it was just a bad, bad scene. Um, what also happened during that during that time was that uh, some guys at school had told me about this great stuff called Stone's Green Ginger Wine, and it came in a green bottle. And uh, um, uh, I bought a bottle somewhere or another, and I took it with me, and I had this to to nip at. And uh, I think I only finished half the bottle um, before I left uh, and went back home. I uh, went into his backyard, and there were a lot of rabbit holes there. I put the bottle of uh, green ginger wine down one of the rabbit holes. And uh, while I was fiddling around with these little cards earlier, I started thinking about that uh, that bottle. Is it still there? Um, and uh, and on, I swear to God, over the years, I, I've thought about that bottle, and I, I thought, well, you know, I hope I hope they didn't m try and mow that piece of grass and, and and screw up. You know, I don't know. I hope there wasn't a bunny rabbit trapped in there, and I was the death of it. And, um, I don't think. I don't think uh, people with the rational type of thinking um, have those kind of uh, thoughts. <laughs> Not over a period of uh, this time. Um, okay, so regardless, so I think I've established that uh, that that you know that um, that I have something uh, a little different and uh, something that licenses me to uh, to drink and to drink to excess. Uh, when I was in Kentucky, I. Uh, um, I managed to rack up three uh, DUIs. Um, I'm not proud of that. Uh, I've heard people that, you know, that had a lot more. And uh, I also know that it's quite possible that there are people in here that drank more than I did, uh, maybe even more often than I did, who have nothing but uh, uh, to show for them. But uh, I know that I felt at the time that each and every time I was very unlucky, that they were out to get me. And uh, um, the truth is, uh, t to the best of my knowledge, uh, uh, I didn't kill anyone or hurt anyone um, in, in the vehicle, uh, but that's that's luck and that's grace. Thank God for that. The the you know we all know people that that have been less fortunate and uh, and had to pay the consequences for that on both sides. Um, uh, I, I, so I had my three DUIs, and uh, uh, it became obvious that I, I couldn't work because my car was an essential part of getting to and from my job. And uh, last time I went to see the judge there, um, I told him, okay, I, I agree, I, I have a problem, and um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave, I'm going to go back to the United Kingdom, and I thought that was going to be good enough, and he told me I needed to spend 30 days uh, in the jail before I did that. So <laughs> that was a real come down. I, uh, <laughs> I, I invented uh, this job I didn't have at the time, so that I could get out on work release. And uh, that's when I first started going to meetings. Um, however, uh, when I came out for the last time after 30 days, uh, I had a friend pick me up. I still had a friend pick me up uh, from the jail and take me home. And um, what she did is she, she was kind enough to buy me lunch on the way home. And we had lunch. And uh, I decided I have a, a beer. And then I had two beers. And that was it. Um, and wasn't drunk, no problem. Then she took me home and dropped me at the doorstep. Um, I went into my uh, into my apartment, which is a beautiful apartment um, uh, above... Uh, well, anyway, it was a beautiful apartment. Um, only when I walked through the door, it was it was a mess. It was horrible. Uh, there were bottles all over the place. There was uh, dish, you know, 
dishes piled up over weeks, I, I think. And, um, and that was, that was a, a shock, you know, uh, sober. I realized that, uh, my life wasn't what I thought it was. Uh, I realized that there was, there was a problem. Um, I also had, uh, somewhere, al- how much time have I got? Somewhere, uh, somewhere along the, the way I've forgotten that I got to get married. And, um, uh, well, <laughs> that's not too, uh, it's not too far from the truth. Um, I, I met, uh, I, I met this, uh, lady, should we say, um, in a Irish bar in Lexington, Kentucky, and she happened to be from the UK as well, and we had a lot in common, and, uh, um, what we also had in common was uh, a desire to drink a lot of, uh, alcohol and, uh, uh, do crazy stuff, I guess. Um, that marriage has since ended a uh, long time ago, thank God, uh, for both of us. But um, I was, uh, I, we, we went back to the UK and uh, we were married in a registry office in uh, Camden Town in London. And um, I vaguely remember getting married, but uh, I was drunk all the way through. And, um, I, you know, on the one hand, it's funny, and I, I, I've certainly joked about it in the past, but really? Um, <laughs> That's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's sad. It really is. Um, she, uh, well, she's doing whatever she's, she's doing now. But she doesn't, she doesn't have me as a problem. Um, you know, so, uh, and she's got her own life to live. So let that, you know, go as it is. Um, but, uh, I got divorced and, uh, uh I managed to get the, the petition in be- ahead of her. So that was a big plus for me. And um, I went. I left. I left the. Uh, I left Kentucky after going to meetings for a little while, and I went back to the United Kingdom. And um, I took my big book with me. Uh, I wasn't able to take this temporary sponsor that I had over there with me. Um, and uh, I went straight uh, into a job, and I had a house with a job, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, the big book that I had um, was under my bed. I didn't want anyone. Not that any women or anybody else was coming into my bedroom at that time, but uh, um, it uh, it started to gather cobwebs, and um, and I I forgot the essential part of uh, of AA meetings, which is uh, that there's a program, and that uh, that I need to work it. And um, over a, a, the next period of months, I continued to work, and uh, I had the most miserable time I can imagine uh, having. Um, without any alcohol and uh, being in a place where I desperately wanted some kind of relief that alcohol would always give me. But knowing that uh, that if I did that, then, um, I, you know, I was going to be in some serious trouble again. And uh, I, uh, I ended up uh, meeting a, a, an old drinking buddy of mine, as, as it happens, and uh, he had just made himself some a batch of... Uh, of beer and uh, he invited me over um, and I took a, a glass and I had one glass and um, that's all I had and uh, as in uh, the same with getting out of jail where I wasn't uh, uh, I wasn't drunk I was still relatively sober uh, I got another big shock and uh, um, you know uh, the, the one glass of beer even you know just um gave me such uh, such a fright um and so i it, i was just so paranoid that i got back into my rental car and you know said my goodbyes to him got it, got into my rental car and spent uh it seemed like the next hour driving around um uh the villages and lanes around uh, uh around that part of england that i was living in uh waiting for the cops to uh, there were american cops as well they were going to come around the corner and with their lights flashing and that's how crazy it was. I was just absolutely crazy. And um, uh, I, kn- I, need- I knew at that point that I really needed help. And, and I knew that that kind of help wasn't going to come from me or the TV or a book even at that point. So I found one of those nice uh, uh, red phone boxes that they have over there and uh, reached out to AA. And uh, they told me that there was uh, – we're out in the middle of the country. They told me there was a meeting in two days' time. So to hold on to my ass and uh, and go to that meeting, and I managed to do that, and uh, um, I went down into this town of Newmarket and went to my first meeting, 
and um, I would say the rest is history, but but uh, what I would say is that that um, uh, began a point at which uh, I went into an A meeting wanting to be there. Um, and not even wanting to not drink, but actually wanting to be in a meeting because I knew that there was something there that uh, that other people had uh, that I had a chance to get. And um, uh, I've gone to meetings on a very regular basis ever since, and, and that's a saving grace. Um, but uh, we all know that, uh, that you know, uh, going to meetings is not going to keep you sober. Um, for any length of time, and it certainly isn't going to give you any kind of a life that uh, that you may think is worthwhile. Um, I have a life today that is uh, more than worthwhile, and um, uh, I'm I'm comfortable in my own skin, which is something that uh, that I didn't think was possible. Um, I've gone through all sorts of therapy without the therapist, and and I mean going to coffee with uh, with friends and. Uh, um, laughing, crying, joking, doing all of those things and, and, um, becoming, uh, a human being, um, and, uh, uh, talking to people that have become friends and, and beginning to trust in people. Um, I don't know why I should say that was a big thing for me because, uh, I, I really feel that, uh, uh, it's the rest of the human race that really couldn't trust me. Um, but it's a, it's a two way street. I've found, uh, I found that, that, Anything I can give uh, is freely given back to me. And um, uh, Tanya mentioned these uh, the traditions and the steps here. Um, the best thing I did beyond going to that first meeting when I came back to the United States was uh, um, I got uh, I got into a um, step and study meeting in North County, and um, it was uh, run by a lady called Georgia who's since passed. Um, and uh, it went on for nine months, I think. Something like uh, 90 people started it, and uh, maybe 30 of us finished it. And um, that's over 20 years ago. Uh, I occasionally run into somebody from that meeting. Um, and of, of those 30, I mean 30 plus. And as far as I know, we always end up, if I run into those people, I always end up sort of trying to revisit who, you know, have you seen so and so and so and so. I think to the best of my knowledge, all those people might still be sober. Um, so that was a structured step study, and uh, and we actually sat down, did some writing, did a lot of talking. Um, a lot of deals were made, uh, not between people, but uh, I made a lot of deals with, uh, with uh, something I call a higher power now. And um, my life improved uh, tremendously. Um, I was told early on to uh, um, to find gratitude and um, and accept uh, gratitude as well. And um, I uh, I used to hit my knees every morning and, and ask for help. And um, uh, that's the only way I could start my day. Uh, it, it was if I didn't do that, then there was some point at which I was reminded when when my thinking started going off or, or I became uncomfortable that. I needed to to do something to get out of myself, and um, uh, I I went through a period of time when I when I stopped doing that, and um, and and I felt it quite keenly that uh, that I wasn't a happy camper. So I started doing it again, and I've been doing it again for quite some time, and and life has improved again, and um, you know. Uh, I, I think my wife uh, thinks I'm stretching on the on the floor there, but uh, what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, <laughs> I'm actually asking for help and uh, and I'm combining it with a stretch as well at the same time because uh, um, I'm getting a little old and uh, um, I still want to be a, an athlete and, uh, and I've got to make a compromise some way or another. Um, so uh, there's a uh, um, I was helped along the way I, uh, uh, by so many people. I mean, there's a room full of people here tonight, and 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 you could fill this room ten times over, and uh, uh, and I still wouldn't be able to uh, to um, scratch the surface of the people who have either directly helped me or said something that was helpful. Now, uh, there's good meetings, and there's other meetings. Um, <laughs> I I've, I've been to a lot of the other meetings. Um, 
But I've, I've found so many times, if I, if I stop judging and just listen, then somebody's going to say something that's going to make me sit up and, and, and take notice. Uh, I, th I often think I have all the answers, and I really don't. Um, um, where is that thing? You know, um, honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. Um, those are the, the how of this program um, has been tremendously important to me. Honesty, um, I believed I, uh, honesty was cash register honesty. And, and working those steps and talking to people and, and, uh, and practicing the principle of this program, I learned that honesty um, is, is very much an inside job. And, and I've learned that if I, I can be uh, honest with myself, then I can learn to be honest with other people. If I can be honest with other people, then I have no fear. And um, if if I don't start my day with with that kind of open mindedness to to reach out, um, then I'm going to be in fear. Uh, but uh, um, I should uh, jump on to uh, um, my higher power. Uh, I went, went uh, I was taken to church uh, by my family. Um, Early on, I went to a school where we went to chapel every day, and you know, I would throw hymn books over the aisle, and we'd all have a good laugh, and so on and so forth. But um, uh, you know, it, it was uh, it was a ritual more than anything else, and um, it was something I came to resent, um, uh, and it was certainly the, uh, one of the first things that I dropped when I when I left home for good. Uh, I stopped going to church, and I therefore stopped thinking about God as anything other than uh, um, an inconvenience. And um, I come to find that uh, that after many years in the so-called wilderness, um, that might be my only uh, uh, saving uh, at the end of the day, um, is, is having some faith that uh, something somewhere is reaching out and offering hope. Um, uh, I don't, I'm not wired uh, as, as an optimist uh, or even somebody with a lot of hope, but I found that I can be uh, hopeful and I found I could be an optimist as long as I remember uh, that I'm not in the driving seat, that I've got a second chance here at life. Um, you know, I mean, there, there are a lot of funny stories and uh, that I could have told and uh, I'm sure I will at some point or another, but... Uh, um, you know, I did a lot of damage. I, I did a lot of damage to uh, relationships, my family. Um, and uh, I, as much as anything, I did a lot of damage to myself. So um, people were kind enough to, uh, to, to be gentle with me and, uh, and, and tell me that, uh, that I needed to forgive, forgive myself. And, um, uh, and only then when I could uh, grow up enough to, and that's a grown-up thing to give, forgive oneself as well. Um, only when I could do that was was I going to be able to uh, to to grow up a little bit and uh, and move forward in my life. Uh, how am I doing? Did you flash what? Really? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so uh, I've, I've mentioned I've mentioned you know people people in in meetings and people helping. Um, I hope I'm as willing to, to help, and I think I am, but I hope I'm as willing to help others and reach out my hand as, uh, as others freely gave me. Um, a lot of you, uh, hope, you know, a lot of you have sponsors. Uh, most of you, I hope. Maybe all. But, uh, um, some people keep a, a sponsor and they keep them for life. Um, I, I haven't done that. Uh, I didn't have a plan one way or the other. It just so happens that, you know, I went through the steps. Um, with a lot of purpose and determination and, and I was very thorough with it thanks to that step study. And, um, I'm of the opinion that once I've done that, then, then everything after that is topping up. Um, so I've, I've sometimes changed, uh, not changed sponsors, but, but thanked, uh, a sponsor for work, working through the steps with me and then reached out to somebody else to do that. And, uh, um, Somebody in this room uh, tonight may be the next lucky recipient of my, <laughs> my 
No, Jeff, not you. <laughs> um, I, I would actually have to have, somebody has to have more time than, than I do to be my sponsor. <laughs> um, and th that's a joke as well, because, uh, um, you know, I, 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 uh, I feel like when I was uh, seven, eight, nine, ten years uh, sober, when I was out there still as a single person, um, you know, occasionally dating or whatever, but uh, going to coffee, taking commitments at meetings, and going to a lot of meetings, um, my life was wonderful. But uh, I had a lot to give, and, and as much as anything else, I had a lot of time to give. And when I had a lot of time to give... Um, uh, I was, you know, um, I was happy to give it. Um, and what we find, or what I found, uh, uh, one of the gifts of sobriety is, uh, it gives you is, uh, the ability to, um, to start to fit in a little bit with what, uh, what your, um, your mission is in life. And, uh, I don't know that my mission was creating children or, or anything, but, uh, um, I ended up, uh, Sorry. Um, anyway, I, I ended up getting married again, and uh, um, really like for like the first time, and um, have two little kids, thirteen and fifteen year old girls, and um, I have no idea what I'm doing a lot of the time. Uh, I, I don't know why you're laughing because um, I don't see my wife laughing. Um, she. Uh, she knows I don't know what I'm doing a lot of the time. My 15-year-old, I'm a joker at home and, um, you know, to the point where it's a little much. Uh, but I find my 15-year-old is just that bit quicker and probably a lot smarter than I am. So uh, they say be careful what you wish for because uh, it'll, it'll come back and get you. And um, uh, I, I wished for, uh, for kids and a family and... Um, uh, I'm, I'm very blessed to get that and, and to keep that as long as I can. Um, fraternity. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, um, there are, there are so many, thank you. God, he's flashed me 10 minutes. Sorry, 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. So now we're on the downhill. Um, <laughs> the, uh, You know, Tanya had mentioned uh, crosstalk, is it? No, what the hell? I've fasc fascinated, <laughs> fascinated with uh, with Tanya. All of a sudden, her, her story is so different. But uh, um, you know, she had mentioned her her kids as well, and and actually, uh, one of her kids is 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 at the same school and uh, at the same age as one of my kids. I don't know if they're friends or not, but. Uh, Never will be, no. <laughs> okay. No, he, he's, a, he's a boy. We don't let her hang out with uh, boys at the moment. But, um, you know, what, what, what are they going to turn out to be like? And, uh, and, you know, she rightly said she doesn't have much control over that. All we can do sometimes is lay the groundwork and, and put, um, put them in a position to, uh, to go through their own stuff and make up their own minds and, uh, and be there as a safety blanket. And, um, uh, that's all I want. I don't have any preconceived notions that my kids are going to be uh, scruble like uh, I, I am, have been. Um, they may, they may not. Um, uh, the jury's out for me on, on whether this uh, is truly a genetic uh, disease, although it does appear from Tanya's family again. There we are, fascination. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they're, they're all a bunch of alcoholics. So I just can't, I can't find them in my background. Um, but maybe I'm hopefully not setting a new trend. Uh, but uh, I, I'm responsible, you know. I'm responsible. Uh, I'm responsible. Oh, here we go. I'm responsible uh, for reaching out. When anyone reaches out uh, for help, I'm there. Uh, I'm responsible to uh, to reach out my hand and help other alcoholics to uh, achieve sobriety, whichever way that may be. Um, but I'm also responsible um, to help these. Uh, these kids uh, get into adulthood and be given the best possible chance they can. And um, that mostly uh, means that I have to stay out of the way and let my wife uh, take care of them. <laughs> and, and I'm not kidding, actually. Um, I'm not kidding, because uh, 
she does a really good job and uh um and and I'm not sure I can um uh I think what all I can do is uh, is is learn to be um less of a joker and more of a, a more of an honest dad kind of figure and um and like this uh this uh vacation I just talked about where we all went back to uh uh to to Wales and uh and the UK they got to see uh, a little bit of of uh of where I come from uh they got to meet some of their cousins or whatever no not their cousins um fifth cousins five times removed and so on and so forth but uh um but they got to, they got to, to to you know to see where you know um where I come from and um uh i think i i think my 15 year old wants to uh wants to move over to wales now and go to, to go to school there i I'm, I'm kidding i don't think i'd allow her to but uh, uh <laughs> You know, um, I, I'll say this: I uh, I really enjoyed being back there, and um, uh, I had a great time. And uh, and I'm glad that's where I grew up, or rather, that's where I, you know, got to the uh, got to the well, sort of grew up. Um, but um, when all said and done, uh, I'm I'm more glad that I'm here now. You know, there's a reason I ended up in uh, in California. I still don't know what it is, but um, uh, that's that's a life that that uh, that I have now have fond memories of. Um, but uh, I, you know, uh, it's, it was a vacation. I'm, I'm back now, and uh, and I'm trying to move on and uh, and move ahead. And I'm still trying to make some sense of. Uh, uh, I'm still trying to make some sense of this, I guess. And uh, I'm sure you're trying to make some sense of where I'm going with this, too. Um, I, I think I'm going to cut it a little short because I'm uh, uh, I'm out of gas here. But <laughs> Okay. All right. So um, a couple of important things that I've, that I've done other than uh, – that I've been part of other than uh, go do a step study and, and, and work those steps, work with the sponsor – and um i've also also been able to uh to reach out and help um other other guys um there's one guy here tonight that i've i've been able to help in some way shape or form and uh uh and um other people have helped me so uh i go to a men's meeting on saturday mornings and i've been going there for over 20 years i i, I realized that this morning while i was sitting there um, that's been uh, something that's very consistent, and it's it's a place where there's you know over a hundred guys, but each and every one of them I think I, I know by name, and uh, and there's there's uh, you know there's there's a lot of trust there, and and that's a place where um, I don't know what you know about men's meetings. If if you're women, I'm sure you have your own thing going as well, but. Um, uh, I used to go to mixed meetings all the time, and I, I loved them as mixed meetings. But uh, what I found in going to men's meetings was that I was able to focus a little bit more on uh, uh, on, on my real issues and my problems. And some of them involve females, I guess. But uh, uh, either way, I found it easier to talk to uh, to, to guys and uh, um, and easier to share stuff at, at those meetings that uh, ordinarily wouldn't share at a mixed meeting. But uh, um, that meeting also puts on a retreat, and uh, um, every twice a year, uh, a bunch of these guys, uh, if you're lucky enough to sign up, a bunch of these guys go away for a weekend up to uh, Julian, and uh, and and embark on some some amazing uh, um, some amazing work, uh, and and just have a great time for over the course of three days, and. Um, I've been I've been to four or five of those retreats, and um, uh, you know that's uh, that's another one of those blessings. You know, um, if if you get the opportunity to uh, um, to go and hang out with a with a group of people and uh, and share your experience, strength, and hope with them, um, it's it's amazing. Thank you, God. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So, all right. Um, I'm not a liar, a cheat, and a thief. Uh, I never thought I was. 
Um, I did find uh, over the course of the years and over the course of working through the steps that I have been each and every single one of those. Um, I try and do the right thing today uh, whenever that's possible. And uh, as a good friend of mine is saying, you know, we come to the meetings here, we share here, we listen, and uh, and all is well and good. And then we go outside into the real world and what happens. Um, you know, I'm... <coughs> I'm the same guy that cut you off on the freeway and um, issued you a finger and, um, and, and vice versa. You know, it's not, uh, it's not something I'm immune from. It's just something that I, 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 I take notice of today. You know, I'm a lot more aware. And um, I get an opportunity to, uh, to, to pause when agitated and, uh, and change, uh, change my thinking. And okay. And I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I get an opportunity to, uh, uh, to be a very different person than I was when I walked in. Um, the truth is I am a very different person, um, but I've, I've, um, I've learned uh, to pick up a so-called spiritual kit of tools and apply them to, uh, uh, to a life that was way too complicated for me. And uh, to be honest with it, very scary um, to be an adult, uh, but I've, I've got all the help and support I need here, and uh, there are some newcomers here tonight. Christ, I forgot about you. Um, there are some newcomers here tonight, and uh, um, you know, come to meetings until you really want to come to meetings, and um, uh, listen for the similarities and not the differences, and um, uh, you get an opportunity to, to change uh, not only your life and, and not only your life, but perhaps uh, other people's lives as well. If you're an alcoholic and, uh, and you decide you have a place here or a seat here, um, you've got the rest of your life in order to make amends to, to, um, to people, to family and to, to put things right and, um, become a responsible, um, um, great human being. And I'm still working at that quite plainly, but, um, I, I'm I'm really very very thankful. I didn't uh, like so many people say when I first started coming into meetings, uh, it was something I just thought I was needing to tick off. And uh, um, thankfully, I didn't uh, I didn't set a target date of I'll do it for a year, I'll do it for five years, or whatever. I've really just done it one day at a time. Uh, that's what you told me, and uh, for the one hundred and first time, you were right. <laughs> Thank you for letting me share. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.